Hi, today I'm going to give a quick overview of Specific Energy's Intelligent Bump Management technology. Um, what this technology does, uh, whether it is a, a water or wastewater pump station or a well, um, it, uh, it, it does a few things. It allows operators to see where pumps are operating on the curve so they can be kept in a good spot um, so that they don't cavitate and they last longer. Uh, it allows for tracking of pump conditions so that some really good asset management decisions can be made based on the condition of the pumps. Um, and it allows operators to select the optimal combination of pumps and speeds um, to keep up with demand and use minimal energy. So I'll cover all those three things in this demo. I'll go ahead and drop these pumps down. This pump station is a pump station in Central Texas. Uh, they've got five pumps. They're all 250 horsepower pumps driven by VFDs. And they have this intelligent management technology installed and this software is running on a device out at the station that uh, is collecting suction pressure, discharge pressure, per pump power and speed. You can see these values up, up here updating a few times a second. But most notably, you can see where each of these pumps are operating on their actual tested curve. So all three of them that are running at the moment are running within their preferred operating ranges. And uh, that that's gonna keep those pumps um, lasting as long as possible. Uh, it's within manufacturer specs and uh, it's where they're intended to be operating, operating without um, causing cavitation. Um, these, the second element of the software is it allows operators to uh, to track the condition, utilities to track the, track the condition of their pumps over time. Um, so we're looking at pump one here. Currently it's testing at 95% of factory efficiency. We'll turn on the factory curve here. And you can see it's just a hair below factory curve is where the tested curve is today. Um, now this technology has been installed at the station for about five years. So if we go back to July of 2014 to look at what the what kind of condition the pump was in, uh, we can see it tested at 103% of factory efficiency. So a little better than factory would have suggested. If we scroll through time, we, we can see that pump curve degrade over the past five years into what it is today at 95% of factory efficiency. Now at 36,000 hours at 95% of factory efficiency, uh, that's still a, uh, a pretty impressive condition for a pump to be in after that sort of use. And it can be attributed to the pump only being operated within its preferred operating range, just, just only within that sweet spot. Now, if we go take a look at pump two, now this pump was replaced about six weeks ago. And uh, we can see what kind of condition it was into prior to that. Um, it was testing at 69% of factory efficiency. You saw that massive shift there in the pump curve. If we go back to present, you can see um, that it tested at 99% of factory efficiency as, as you would have expected with a new pump. Um, but you can see what the, the previous pump, same pump, 250 horsepower flow serve pump, um, a massive loss in efficiency and capacity. And uh, we can go back and take a closer look at some of those metrics that were used to make that decision to replace that pump. Um, so we'll go take a look at their monthly reports. And uh, well, we'll take a look at April 2019. Um, we've got the pump two report card here. That's that second pump that we were looking at, 69% of factory efficiency. Uh, repair net present value of $52,898, repair ROI of 112.5%. Um, so this pump had a present value of energy reduction of $100,000. So what this technology does is it does a virtual replacement of that pump and sees what the energy usage difference is um, and then takes the present value of that over the life of the new pump. The repair cost of $47,000 with a net present value of that replacement of this pump at $52,898. So the positive ROI of 112.5%, they went ahead and got that pump pulled and replaced it. So that covers the first two elements of this technology, being able to see where pumps are operating on their curve so that they can be kept in a good spot uh, to make those pumps last as long as possible and track the changes in condition so that some, some asset management decisions can be made based on 
the net present value of repairs rather than running that pump until it, it's not moving water anymore um, or until something else seriously fails. Um, so we're going to take a look at the last bit of our technology, which is the optimization portion. Um, we'll take a look at the specific energy map here. This station has three pumps running at the moment, so they're in a bit of a high demand period. Um, we'll take a look at the current operating point, but this this graph that we're looking at here is a specific energy map. So we've got specific energy, kilowatt hours per million gallons on the y-axis, flow, gallons per minute on the x-axis. Um, essentially, as you move horizontally on this chart, you get more flow. As you move vertically, you use more in energy. So ideally, you would stay as low as possible and move further to the right as possible uh, when operating this pump station and trying to achieve higher flow rates. So at the moment, this station is asking for 4,274 gallons per minute. And the cheapest way, based on the, the pumps they have and the kind of condition they're in and the demand um, and the tank levels in the system, and this solution changes about once a second, so you might see it shift around a bit as we sit here and watch it. But we've got pump. <coughs> the cheapest way to achieve the flow rate at the moment is to run pump one at 55 hertz, pump two at 55.1 hertz, pump five at 53.2 hertz. So the idea here is that by operating, um, by achieving the uh, system demand with the minimal energy output uh, can have some pretty big saving co savings consequences for utilities um, over time. And this station in particular has seen 20% in energy savings, which amounts to about $38,000 a year. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> if I were to cover all of our uh, features, um, this video would get a bit too long. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up there. But please uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, visit our website, and we'd be happy to talk with you. Thank you for watching.